there's this pretty cool video or pretty funny video courtesy of um what's his name grime daily regarding the one and only ruigi from rude he sat down with a grime daily guy to talk about his come up and it made me laugh because this particular video i think in my humble opinion is clearly a lie so i would like to know why do people lie about their or their their come up their upbringing their start when it comes to creative cultural entertainment arty stuff like what's the point now you're creating great stuff and people love what you do why are you embellishing your startup story to make it sound movie like because it's not true sometimes you just want to do stuff because you want to do stuff there is no like crazy reason why you started or some highfalutin story or some sob story like everyone wants to have like that really cringe kind of american idol um story and narrative to explain why they do what they do when sometimes it's as simple as i enjoy doing this so i just started doing it it's not that deep so let me play this video that features rigi of rude explaining why he started his brand you could never ask me what a dream job was because to me i was like i was just wanted to be able to have a bed and all these things so for me yeah i've heard that like part of the reason you started this brand is because you wanted to have a bed a fucking bed bro <laughs> i didn't even dude this is come on man so the interviewer has said he's heard that he's heard that so this is his thing that he says i went to have a bed i went to have a bed it's one of his kind of points that he hits every time he has an interview bro you started making t-shirts and like button up t-shirts, button up shirts with like fake Marlboro fucking designs all over it because you wanted to sleep on the bed or because you just thought the design was hard or because you thought you had a particular voice in menswear was needed or your aesthetic was missing or that you felt like there was a gap you could kind of feel or that you wanted to make money and be famous and fuck some baddies. Why are you lying? You went to have a bed. That's why you started a fashion brand. Why didn't you just get a job? <laughs> if you if you were bedless, right? If you were bedless, why not just get a normal job? Why would you make a brand? <laughs> that makes no sense. This is like real, real story. I used to fold like six blankets to sleep on. For real? Dude, this is true. Like, so it's, wait, it's okay, fair. We've all had to do some crazy shit. I've had to sleep on foldable beds, bunk beds, one bed, no bed. Cool. We've had to, you know, if you've been, if you're from the street, so you're from the ends, you've had to do some rough things to get where you need to get to. But that wasn't the inspiration for me. What? Deciding I went to DJ. Deciding I went to have a podcast. Deciding that I wanted to have a brand. What is that? What? You just, that was just what you had to go through at the time because you didn't have the means to not go through it. But when you do have the means to go to not go through it, you change it. You change your circumstances or you change your situation. But it doesn't mean that that was a reason why you started singing. You started singing because it was a way out of your current situation. But that wasn't the, the, the catalyst for it. It was one of the many, many things. But I love how he wants to be, um, it's just kind of like, you want to like um, give your story like a Hollywood ending, the pursuit of happiness. This is the pursuit of streetwear, the pursuit of fashion. It's like, come on, bro, wind your neck in. A bed, all right. You it's not that me... far, it's not that long ago too. So, I so like... you mean to tell me when you- It's not that long ago, it is long ago. It's more than a decade long. I've been following this guy for a while. I've known on the brand for a while. I spoke to him offhandly many, many, many moons ago about being part of the Virgil Streetwear program that I was putting together. Um, you know, he was gracious about it. He kind of waffled and, you know, was non-committal and in the end didn't follow through, but it's okay. But, you know, this guy's been making good money and having a very successful brand for a long time, despite all the trouble he got into with his partner and former partner of the brand, accusing him of stealing the brand and suing him. I'm not sure what happened to that, by the way. Maybe they settled out of court. But he, he, how you dare you say he's not long ago? Come on, man. Don't don't poverty stolen valor. You know what I mean? Don't laugh as, uh, like, come on. He's probably been rich longer than he's been poor. <laughs> you know, like, come on, man. Come on. Did he start at this brand? You were sleeping on six blankets. Not even, I was six blankets on top of a futon, which was just wood. Wow. On, on a Toshiba laptop. Wow. I used to just be a kid that used to boost in the, in the streets. You know, I was like boosting clothes and, Nor and Nordstrom's and all that. Oddly enough, I'm, the, I'm like one of the top sellers in these retailers that I used to boost at. You know? I'm not surprised he used to boost, by the way. He boosted his friend out of ownership of Rude. Right, he boosted his friend allegedly out of the ownership of Rue. So I'm not surprised he has a history of stealing, of theft, of fraud. 
<laughs> five finger discounts. You're trying to tell me a guy who's because c- you know, for lack of a better term, if you're a kid and you're boosting right at Nordstroms and shit, most likely you care a lot about your image. You care a lot about how you've been perceived. You care a lot about you how you look. You care. That's why you're stealing those things to appear like you're a bigger deal than what you actually are. Because you want to wear those things. You see yourself in those things. You see yourself of that caliber. Do you think a guy who's willing to steal clothes from a Nordstrom, allegedly, because again, I don't even believe that. I don't even believe the whole story narrative. I don't. I don't believe it. Because people who do steal, people who have stole to fucking feed themselves and to put clothes on their back and to keep a roof over their head, they're ashamed of it. They don't brag about it like this. They don't like brag about it like it's some like um, achievement or there's some rite of passage. You don't. If you've done it before, if you've stolen because you're hungry, it's something you take to your grave. You don't brag about it and act like this is the trait that you need to show that you're hungry for the job and you're a hustler. Imagine going to a job interview and saying, oh, I'm so hungry for this job. I stole this suit I'm wearing. They would never hire you. You know what I mean? It's not like an admirable trait. It's not an admirable thing to do. So I don't even believe any of the stories. I don't believe the fucking fold up. I don't believe sleeping on a... I don't believe the... Um, what you call it? Folding the towels to sleep on it. I don't believe that. And I also don't believe... And if, and if I do, did believe the Nordstrom boosting story, the, the, the Nordstrom shoplifting story, that would mean that if you, could lift, if you could shoplift clothes from Nordstrom, why don't you shoplift the fucking bed? Why don't you shoplift a mattress, a duvet cover? Doesn't make any sense. A pillow. Why don't you do that? I, I see people that come into my local hood barbershop all the time with fucking duvet covers, with bed sheets, bed linings, du- pillows and stuff. It happens all the time. If you're if you're a thief and you sell that stuff for money, you can thief anything. So the fact that he didn't thief a bed, he didn't thief a mattress, he didn't thief a duvet, a bed sheet, leads me to believe that this story is complete gobbledygook. But I would just like to know, this guy is a very successful business owner a very successful brand owner, has a popping brand, well regarded, people seem to like what he does. Why are you lying? Why are you trying to lionize yourself with a lie? Maybe you can embellish a story, exaggerate it, but flat out lying is wild, honestly. I don't understand these people and why they lie. I don't get it. It's really, really bizarre. But again, it reminds me of American Idol at its peak or X Factor at its peak, where people would come on and they would have these sub stories about, oh, I remember growing up, my dad, like every artist actually has it. My mum used to play piano while she was cooking chicken in the, in, in the kitchen. My dad used to play on the cello jazz music while he was tending to the weeds in our garden. My dad, like, what? Like, James Brown was playing on the hi-fi. My mom was playing Kylie Minogue. It's like all these made-up musical references. Like, bro, some of the most musically gifted people come from families where both of the parents don't give a fuck about music. If anything, sometimes, in most cases, the parents were actively trying to dissuade you not to pursue your dreams, telling you to wake up, telling you to go get a real job, telling you to abandon your thing, telling you you're wasting your time. Then you make it and they turn around and be like, oh, man, I always knew, I always knew. So why lie? You know the truth. Your parents aren't musical. You just like it because you liked it. You saw somebody cool doing it on TV like the rest of us and you started doing it. No, these like, like I remember when I went to St. Martin's, the main reason why I went there is because I used to watch this show called uh, Better by Design, actually. It was a really cool um, industrial, it was like an industrial design studio um, that had clients, you know, all the way from like Samsung's to like car companies and shit. And they would have this show. It was like a reality TV show that kind of followed this this um, studio. I think the studio is called Seymour Powell. Seymour and Powell, Seymour Powell. Um, this uh, duo of these guys who are product designers, industrial designers. And it would follow them as they got a brief from a company, presented concepts and shit, and then kind of went through the whole phase, the whole process of like, you know, ideation all the way to manufacturing. And sometimes a thing will fall through, whatever, maybe, but it was really inspiring. So that got me, that was the reason why I went to St. Martin's to study product design. But I'm not going to lie and say, oh, I went to St. Martin to do product design because I didn't have a remote. I didn't have a remote. We had to always like change the TV by standing up. So I wanted to make a remote, you know. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a computer. So I had to like make my own computer by hand. So I like, even though actually when I was growing up, we didn't actually have a PlayStation. So I made one like cardboard and we use our imagination, which is a whole different story. But <laughs> that shows you the depths of the poverty that I grew up in. But there's always a lie about it. You know, 
and add extra spice to the story or extra fucking seasoning to the fucking rice. It doesn't make any sense. Like, really? I, I made a brand because I didn't have a bed. I, all right, mate. All right. Whatever you say, brother. Whatever you say. I don't really understand those lies. I think they're fucking nonsensical. But I think, you know, most people who don't care, who don't over analyze what people say who don't have podcasts probably believe it so i'm probably in the minority because most people do believe it they think it makes sense and it's all good me personally i don't buy it 